Greetings programs, it's 8.30, it's the 7th day of February 2022, it's 53 degrees and sunny with a high wind warning yet again, which means my allergies are already acting up. I am a health nightmare. Anyways, it's Monday in most corners of the world, which means it's time to take a look at all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and general nonsense. See if anything in the world has changed since the last time we looked on Friday, other than, ooh, Bucks Machina. All right, so, uh, Wizards of the Coast has a new president, Cynthia Williams. She's a former Microsoft individual, big in computers and stuff like that. Wants to do a lot of stuff with mobile gaming and uh, stuff like that. So she is coming from Microsoft to... Wizards of the Coast to shake things up and, you know, take Wizards of the Coast and the new generation to make it a viable uh, contender in the 21st century as we enter into the digital age or other words that, you know, sound exciting and mean, yeah, more of the same. Uh, what, if anything, is this woman going to change coming into Wizards of the Coast? Who knows? Uh, she claims she's a gamer. But that doesn't mean much of anything anymore, really, does it? Uh, she brings a lot of video game knowledge. She brings a lot of corporate, you know, handshaking knowledge. She's definitely survived in Microsoft long enough to be considered worthy of being headhunted and brought over to Wizards of the Coast. So maybe she's got something to offer. Maybe she can change the direction that Wizards of the Coast is going or at least spearheaded into the inevitable digital age that Wizards of the Coast will have to evolve into to continue to remain king of the hill as we enter into this new exciting age of cyberpunk computer -y nonsense. News! Moving on. Hey, we already talked about this one. Evil Genius Productions announced a crowdfunding project to reboot D20 Modern. I've already signed up for that one. Uh, they're doing, they're calling it Everyday Heroes. It's going to be a D20 modern, I guess, either updated from the old rules, which were 3.5 OGL, or using 5, or perhaps using a whole new D20 system. Um, just out of curiosity to remind myself, I downloaded the old character record sheet from D20 modern. Uh, there were enough stuff I liked about D20 modern. There's a lot of stuff I didn't like about D20 modern. Um... You know, they tried to make it too much like D and D set in you know two thousand whatever Earth, uh, which doesn't really work. Um, I'm looking at the skills, and yeah, they're just—it was sort of a mess. There was a lot of good ideas, but it was kind of a mess because um, I was trying too hard to, I guess, be Shadowrun or Dresden Files or whatever. So hopefully, this one will fix some of the issues the last one had. While still creating the ability that if you want to do, you know, Shadowrun, uh, Dresden Files, Urban Arcana, Buffy, or if you want to do just, you know, a, a cop show, you can. So we'll see. Uh, I'm crowdfunding it, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Role Play Heaven is a charity bundle that's gone up. It's 100 pounds worth of game books and custom t-shirts to support charities in the uh, UK. Uh, it costs about 18 pounds, which I believe is about $21 American. Uh, I'm not sure. You get a whole bunch of PDFs, you get a couple hard copies, and you get a really cool shirt whose picture I have displayed on today's vlog. So, it's, yeah, I guess it's one amongst the many of the charities it's supporting is the um, COVID crisis in the UK because it's got a beholder wearing the COVID mask zapping viruses. So, yeah, it's a cool shirt. Uh, good charity. So, yeah, if you live out there in the great UK and want to support it, there you go. If you live here and want to support it and get a cool shirt and a bunch of uh, PDFs, yeah. Um, obviously, there'll be some shipping issues, but sure, whatever. Uh, the Dungeons & Dragons television series is a new creative overseer, Rawson Marshall Thuder. Rawson Marshall Thuber. Thuber was, will write and produce one-hour pilot episode and act as executive for producer. His uh, previous work includes working with Ben Stiller and a trio of films starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Central Intelligence, Skyscraper, and Red Notice. Central Red Notice was okay. Skyscraper was diehard. 
Central Intelligence had a couple funny moments. It's in pre-production. Uh, well, right now he's working on another project. Uh, he's doing a pre-production of a video of a live-action adaption of the Division video game, and then he will be moving on to work on this. Uh, the series is front is separate from the feature film that is supposedly coming out in 2023. This could also be the project that was announced that Derek Kolstad of John Wick, fame, John Wick fame was working on. Or it could be a completely different project. So there might be two D&D TV show projects as well as a D&D movie project. Is there a market for a live action D&D show by the same guy who brought us a bunch of action comedies? Is, is he going to make it an action comedy? Uh, well, based upon the general feelings for uh, Critical Role of Legends of Vox Machina, maybe, maybe not. Or maybe you need to rethink the the best audience for a D&D themed product is action comedy. I don't know. I mean, there's a reason why The Witcher works. There's a reason why The Expanse works. There's a reason why Record of Lotus War is still considered the best fantasy anime ever. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't have high hopes. But who knows? It is still Zine Month. Uh, in case you haven't found, in case you don't remember, actually, it's Zine Year. There's a grassroots promotion called Zine Month. It's underway. It's been going underway since the start of the year. Crowdfunding various TTRPG zines. Uh, so they're, you know, doing every month, they're doing at least 130 products, that both big and small, to support small press tabletop role-playing game projects. Uh, here and around the world. So Zine Year 2002, then Zine Quest 2022, which is, I guess, a big convention they're having sometime in the summer. Uh, so yeah, uh, supporting zines are something that you're into and you want to take a look at some more small press uh, products for gaming, 5e or otherwise. You know, zines are great. They're small. They're limited. They're usually limited issues. So there's always that, you know, Ooh, this is a collector's item. Uh, feeling going for it uh, you know because they're low budget to produce they're low budget for you there's a great way to get a lot of content for your tabletop role-playing game of choice for a very good reasonable price as opposed to say you know the 180 bucks you gotta fork out for wizards of the coast shit right now god i gotta stop picking on wizards of the coast it's just too easy so yeah check that out uh, Kickstarter backers have already begun to receive copies of Free League's The One Ring 2nd Edition, but we now have a date for when the actual campaign will end and start sending out the stuff to anybody who hasn't gotten it yet. It's March 22nd, with the actual starter set hitting the bookshelves later on this year, uh, probably after March. This was a Kickstarter that got about 17 million pounds or about 1.8 million no not 17 million pounds 17 million sex which is i guess the money in wherever free league lives sweden uh but it was a two million dollar kickstarter uh so if you're a fan of free league publishing and the mutant year zero engine and have been excited about all the different properties they've been able to convert to your year, year zero d6 explodey dice engine and still work here's another one and they want to you know tramp around in the world of middle earth this could be it uh we have a board the first of the board games coming out from the partnership between pezo and gale force 9 the first one is cost starfinder pirates of skydock and that's scheduled for release later on this year and then we have um Pathfinder Tall Tales, also scheduled for later on this year. And we have another one called Pathfinder Level 20, which you have two to six players on the roll who play kobolds trying to run away from a 19th level fighter who needs five experience points to hit level 20. Uh, that one sounds fun. And speaking of Pezo, the United Pezos Workers, the labor union that Pezo employees set up last year 
has posted an update. Uh, the negotiation team for the union had their first meeting with the pay to bozo leadership team and agreed on ground rules for the negotiation going forward. So we've agreed to meet, to have a meeting where we're going to agree to what we're going to talk about in the next meeting. Yep, that sounds like the unions for you. <laughs> hey, don't get me wrong. If a union works, it works, and that's great. If a union doesn't work, then that's just awful. Um... Hmm, I had a thing I wanted to talk about, and now I can't find it. Oh, well. Moving on. It's Bumble time! Yay, Bumble Bumble. That's what I wanted to be talking about. Bumble time. Bumble time. Bumble time. Whatever you want to call it. Okay, this week from our friends over at Humble Bundle, we have the Black Library is back with another bum bundle for Warhammer and Warhammer 40K. We've got 25 PDFs and DRM free books for $18 covering works Warhammer 40K, Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer F Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, there's a word we haven't heard in a while, and House of Heresy. This Bundle continues to support the Every Library Institute and runs through uh, mid-February. Speaking of bundles, let's go over to see what's going on in Bundle of Holding. We have the Palladium Fantasy 1E bundle for $13. This contains everything you need to run the Palladium Fantasy RPG. If you want an in-depth review of the Palladium Fantasy Arch RPG 1st Edition, head on over to... Legion of Myth, link down below. They're doing a deep, deep, deep dive into the world of Palladium. Every week, they have been looking at various Palladium products from start to finish. So they're probably the base people that listen to. And there's also the Palladium Fantasy 2 e source book, which is $18 and has got everything you need to, to run a game in Palladium Fantasy 2. Uh, we have something from... A company called Mind Jammer. I guess it's a uh, space game. The core collection is thirteen dollars. Consi consists of Mind Jammer RPG, several um, supplements for Mind Jammer, and a novel. The bonus collection contains more supplements and some source books and a couple adventures. I don't know what Mind Jammer is, but I guess it's a space opera tabletop role playing game from May two thousand and eighteen. Goodman Games has got a uh, support pack up uh, on Bundle of Holdings, supporting various uh, products of theirs. Uh, the starter collection is ten dollars. Cons consists of the Adventures Almanac, DM came Campaign tra Tractor, PC Pearls, which is like a PC advice book, GM Gems, which is like a GM advice book. The bonus collection contains a monster book. A dungeon book, the Cthulhu book, um, some more adventures and stuff like that. Ooh, the entire line of the short-lived Baker Street um, RPG role-playing in the world of Sherlock Holmes is available on Humble Bumble for twenty bucks. I mean, bundle of holding that includes every product that was made for Baker Street, all one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Uh, so yeah, if you never got a chance to pick up the, uh, Victorian tabletop role-playing game in the world of Sherlock Holmes, and that's something you always thought you wanted, 20 bucks will get you every product, every made from Fearlight Games for their Baker Street. Uh, Suspense Radio is still got a bundle up over at Bundle of Holding, so these are, um, MP3 audio episodes of crime and strangeness from old-time radio programs. Uh, or remakes of old-time radio programs. So $7 gets you three episodes of three of their products, and the bonus collection gets you seven more episodes plus some additional stuff. So if you ever want to relive the classic adventures of The Shadow or Doc Savage or you know Midnight Murder Mysteries of the old radio days, check this out. Yeah. Uh, if you have any interest in the index card role-playing game, the one of the highest-selling, highest-reviewed 
products ever on drive through from our old friend Runehammer. Uh, there is a R index card RPG Master Edition now available from Mofidius for about 50 bucks. It's a 400 page rule book designed by Hankin and considers plus his art and has uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, this sounds exciting. Uh, it comes, it's 49 bucks. It's got 400 pages. Five complete worlds, a massive collection of D100 loot tables, uh, critically acclaimed nuts and bolts GM section. Uh, plus, it got has four years of prints out folders, monster folders. If you've never seen Hank's work for drive through, it's great. It's very inspiring, and it prints out as like index cards because, uh, of course, the game is all based around index cards. Uh, yeah. Plus, there's a comprehensive free 159 page collection of adventures and material released so yeah for 49 bucks this is a great way to get this product um i might even pick it up and uh, yeah oh the month the um Judge Dredd and World of 2000 AD role-playing game line is finally coming to an end. The books will no longer be available after February 28th, I guess, because of licensing or just lack of a market. So if you want a chance to pick up the Judge Dredd and World of 2000 AD tabletop role-playing game, based, of course, on the Judge Dredd comic book, uh, your last chance to get them will be February 28th. You can get them directly from the uh, distributor or from EN Publishing or from DriveThru, I guess. And after February 28th, they're gone. Yeah, it's 28th. It's not a leap year this year. So, yep, yeah, no February 29th. So that's it. We've got a new person in charge of Wizards of the Coast. We've got some new games coming out. We've got some words from the union about what's going on with the Peso Union, which is they're planning to make plans to talk about what plans they're making. And of course, Legend of Vox Mechana is on Amazon and uh, is meeting makes reviews. I reviewed it briefly on Saturday and my general review was, meh, it's okay. It's harmless. It's not what, you know, it's never going to live up to the expectations it has. It sort of feels a little too little, a little too late. It's kind of like, oh, I've, already all, I've already seen all this, you know? It just reminds me of every D&D-esque anime that's been made in the shadow of Record of Lotus War. So, yeah, you know, I know people are complaining about it, and my general feeling is, as much as I hate to defend Critical Role, give it a chance. I mean, it's the first production. It's the first season of the first production, Shows never really get picked, you know, pick up steam to the second season. The first season is just to see if they have an audience and to experiment. So, yeah, give them a chance. People who are complaining about it and people who think it's great, then great. You think it's great. You have nothing to complain about. That's it for the news for today. I am your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and general internet nonsense. If you appreciate the words that are coming out of my mouth, please take a second to like this video share this video with somebody else you think might enjoy it and of course subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet help me hit 1000 subs by august 4th 2022 and we'll do something crazy till then have a safe day and i will be back with our usual nonsense either later today or tomorrow get off my land